I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my life living in Nicaragua. Today we have a little bit of follow-up on the incredible news story that hit just a few days ago that they announced it's just, it's being argued, but a lot of Canadians are beginning to flee to Nicaragua. And of course, there was a lot of pushback from the Canadian government about this claiming that it wasn't true. Well, I can tell you firsthand from living in Nicaragua, having been here for nine years, living here continuously for more than three and talking to people every day about relocation, what life is like down here, travel to Nicaragua, things like that. I can tell you that the percentage of people that we are talking to that are Canadian, and the way that they're presenting the reasons that they want to come down here have definitely changed recently. And while I'm not sure we're going to agree with the statement that Canadians are fleeing to Nicaragua, I am going to agree that this is the moment that Canadians should be looking at Nicaragua and we need to dive into a little bit for them specifically and for everyone else as to why Canada may be at a tipping point pushing people away and why Nicaragua might be one of those places you really need to be considering because it might just be the right fit for you and a surprise location that while many Canadians do come here, many more know very little about. So we're going to talk about Nicaragua, Canada, what's going on, the news right after the bump. Now this comes as relatively perfect timing because I just did the Nicaragua Roundtable on my Latin Life podcast, which has been around for 10 years and is run by a Canadian who's been living primarily in Mexico, uh, but interviews people all across Latin America about their lives here, what it's like living here and, and so forth, and looks at many different countries. It just happens to be perfect timing that Nicaragua came up for the round table. Now, it has not gone public yet, so by the time you see this, I don't think it'll be up yet, but it will be very soon. The El Salvador round table just went up. I'm also being interviewed this coming week on the podcast, but I don't know when that'll be available. But it's interesting because it just happened to be a podcast from a Canadian who's been living abroad for for quite some time. And the majority of the people being interviewed about Nicaragua were Canadians because it turns out the majority of prominent people who are expats or immigrants here in Nicaragua are from Canada. Now there's lots of reasons for this, but we're gonna dig into it. But for a lot of Canadians, this is coming up as a very new thing because it was just said earlier this week uh, in the news uh, there was an interview, with, and I'm going to link it. It's going to be right here, hopefully. I'm going to try to pop up a link, there, and it'll definitely be in the show notes if it doesn't on your media pop up up there. Uh, but there was this interview with a family or a woman whose family had moved from Cape Breton down here to Nicaragua, and she was talking about how they would like to live in Canada again, but they were raising their children down here because life in Canada had just gotten too expensive, and they couldn't really uh, make things work up there. And, of course, uh, on some you know, points of the political divide. People want to promote the idea that Canada is struggling and that families in Canada are struggling. Uh, and of course, the other side wants to say that things are great and that everything is fine and that all the problems that people uh, talk about are, are made up. Now, if you're living in Canada, if you're a Canadian, uh, you just know the answer to this, right? You don't need me to tell you which side is correct. If either you know if things are expensive, you know if inflation is hitting you hard, you know if civil liberties are eroding. That is your personal or your uh, national thing. Like I'm an American. I know what I'm hearing. And what I'm hearing is I've gone from a world that has been traditionally a majority of the immigrants here are Canadian, or at least the largest individual group of people in Nicaragua are Canadian. But this goes back a long time and is not because of problems in Canada that I am completely sure of, because this goes back decades and Canada has been doing really well during a lot of that time period. So something else has to be going on as a fundamental driver for Canadians to want to come to Nicaragua. And I think this is really easy to point out in about three spots. So I was going to say three things that I think, and I've known Canadians here for a really long time. I have tons of Canadian friends now, um, and, and many of them move here. And I do know that these are often driving factors. And one, this should come as no surprise, Nicaragua has no snow. It doesn't matter what you think of Canada or Nicaragua or anything else. Canada is cold and Nicaragua is warm and there's a whole bunch of Canadians who would really like to exchange snow for sun. So that alone is just a factor. So everyone should be able to agree right away. There's, it's, it's warm. People who want it warm, this is a great option. Number two, of all the countries in the region, except of course Cuba, Nicaragua is not a place that the United States tends to send its expats. So in all the rest of the region, we're talking Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, Costa Rica especially, Panama quite to some degree, and much of the Caribbean, 
all of these places are primarily dominated by American and European expats who have moved into those regions in huge droves. Cuba, of course, it is not technically legal for Americans to go live there. Nicaragua, it is absolutely legal for Americans, but the United States has really worked hard to discourage Americans coming down and discovering what Nicaragua is like. So without getting political, that is simply a well-known, easily documented fact that the United States and Nicaragua have always been antagonistic with each other since the early 1850s, and that is not going to change anytime soon. The United States simply discourages its citizens from discovering paradise here. And because of that, that's irrelevant. Because that fact exists, there are far, far fewer, both in absolute numbers and definitely in relative numbers, Americans living in Nicaragua compared to every other country in the region. Everything from Mexico to Panama has a greater concentration of Americans in it than Nicaragua. And that alone is a major draw for a lot of Canadians. It is a rarity to have a spot where they can actually go, and it's not all Americans everywhere. And most of South America is dominated with Americans as well. The U.S. just has a much larger population than Canada, a little bit over 10 times. So this is a natural thing. It's not because the Americans go out more. There's nothing like that. It's just there's a huge country. Canada is one-tenth the size. They have the same set of places they can travel to within the same reasonable dis distance. Toronto and New York fly to places in the same amount of time. So Canadians have a tendency to look at Nicaragua as a unique experience where it's primarily Canadians and to a lesser degree Europeans and to a far lesser degree Americans there than anywhere else. So of course, if you're a Canadian and you want to be around Americans, you have so many choices and you would go there. But for the very large percentage of Canadians who do want to move abroad, whether it's a second home, just a vacation home, you want a snowbird, or you just want a life that's warmer, like whatever, Nicaragua draws a lot of Canadians specifically simply because it has what we call the American vacuum. And that's a major, major factor. And then factor number three, regardless of how well or bad things are going, uh, badly things are going in Canada or U.S. at any given time, Nicaragua is incredibly inexpensive. It is the best cost of living in all of North America. It is uh, often like right neck and neck with places like Colombia for the best cost of living in all of the Western Hemisphere. So that alone makes it a really big draw as well. And of course, coming in number four, it is the safest uh, Latin American country, except very momentarily, El Salvador has passed Nicaragua. But in, in the, long, uh, the long game, Nicaragua is the most stable, cost-effective, safe country with safety that is actually, uh, in many cases, closer to Canada than to even the United States. Nicaragua is safer than the U.S. right now, uh, and, and according to the official numbers, n more dangerous than Canada, but that's a very reasonable spot to be, right? Very safe. So Nicaragua has traditionally always been a draw for Canadians. And if you come to Nicaragua and spend any amount of time, it is very obvious that you are bombarded with Canadians at every turn. Everywhere you go in the country, there are Canadians and projects from the Canadian government. Most of those have now dried up. But traditionally, when I first came here nine years ago, there were billboards everywhere from the Canadian government. And there still are in many places, although mostly it has been abandoned, but you still see the remnants of the deep integration that Canada and Nicaragua had had in the not too distant past. So having these Canadians already here also provides a very big draw. Just as you see in Canada, for example, you'll have a community where someone will uh, become an, uh, an expat from another country, maybe from India, maybe from uh, China, maybe from uh, somewhere in Africa, you're going to have someone and they and they send news home to family and they say, Oh, I figured out how to live here. I got a career here. Come, you can stay with me. And I have resources. I can introduce you to people. I can help you. Right. And so you get pockets of communities based around the first first person who's like a pioneer. And then once they're there, that area, and it'll be different, different parts of the country. The people who have come to say Vancouver as expats versus Toronto are often at least somewhat different because different people just kind of started there. And that's who drew people in naturally. In the United States, we know this very well from, say, New York. Uh, a number of people came from Sicily, sent word home, and were like, oh, we have resources, we have jobs. And, and so tons of people came from Sicily, like my wife's family came and settled in that New York City area and eventually spread out into the countryside. And, and so you have this region that more recently, in the last 200 years, has a completely different demographic created by a large expat community uh, compared to, uh, say, the 
rest of the state much further afield, which remains its, uh, retains its original Dutch heritage because it hasn't had big groups move in as expats since then. So we see that same thing happening here in Nicaragua and long have that a number of Canadians come down and then of course they send word home and go, wow, I'm living in Nicaragua. I, I know how to get around. I know how to deal with my residency. I know how to deal with my visas and things like that. And so they tell other Canadian friends and they say, you should come down as well because you should live near me because then we can hang out. I can see my friends again, see family again, but also I can tell you which store to go shop at. I can tell you which market to go get a good deal. I can tell you which restaurants are good. I, I know where to find a nice house, right? You have those resources. It's just natural. This is how it works. And we just recently did this interview for those. Uh, I will do my best to link that up here as well, because this is a perfect timing for this. Uh, we did a uh, interview with Jeff Bramwell down at Pla uh, Playa Tesoro, which is very close to here in Leon about an hour away on, on dusty roads. And in that interview, he is a Canadian, came down here, uh, he came down here himself, but really soon his brother came down. Uh, they went back, they talked to, to friends in British Columbia, I believe. And, and really quickly, uh, they started, you know, having, uh, I mean, really, really quickly in, in a matter of weeks, they had friends that they just knew that they were having drinks with, told them about, oh, they just discovered this place, just bought some land. And then their friends are like, well, we, that sounds great. Let's get some land and, and try it out, right? Because it's low cost. They weren't looking to move. They were just looking to have vacation homes. But really quickly, a community of Canadians started springing up in Playa Tesoro because one Canadian came down, went back, told other people about it. And of course, they're not going to come down and just go, I'm going to pick a random location. Well, why not be near the other Canadians that they're already friends with? And so these communities naturally grow all over the world. And here in Nicaragua, we have a really strong tradition of Canadian expats building those communities. And so no matter where you go in the country, with rare exception, you're going to find at least one or two Canadians, if not large pockets of them. I live in Leon. We have loads of Canadians in the city. We have loads of Canadians at the beach. Probably about 50% of all expats that we interact with are Canadian here. But that's to be expected if you really look at the history, the demographics, the geographic location, and all those factors, it becomes really natural as to why Canadians would want to come here. I'm gonna cut in for a second and just interrupt what we're talking about to make a quick request. If we have any Canadians who are either living in Nicaragua, visiting Nicaragua, have been to Nicaragua, or considering Nicaragua, any of those things, <clears throat> or are looking at emigrating but not looking at Nicaragua, or are coming to Nicaragua but aren't Canadian. Well, I really want to get some people. It's very hard. Every Canadian I talk to seems to have the same story. They're working multiple jobs. They have double shifts. They have absolutely no time to possibly discuss this, which pretty much proves the point that people are struggling just to put food on the table in Canada. But I know there are tons of Canadians here. I've been on podcasts with them this week. It would be great. I just, I, nobody, I've been saying this for every topic and no one sends in videos, but please send in a few for this. I'm trying to get some people to send in videos or, or comments or do an interview. Send me a link. All the information is down in the comments, and of course you can ask questions down there as well, but look down there in the show notes, there's information on using wetransfer.com to send me a video, how to take the video, where to send it, where to email me for an interview, everything right down there. Just send in a little bit and talk about why you're looking at moving, what, uh, we don't really need to know why people are leaving Canada, that I think is covered, but why Nicaragua's on your radar, if you've been here, how you feel about it, why you know it's safe, why you know it's affordable, why it's a nice location, why you like it, any of that kind of stuff would be great to put on the show. It doesn't have to be long, doesn't have to be formal. Just send that in. I would really appreciate it. All right, back to the show. So that's a very important background. Canadians have long used Nicaragua as one of the really desirable locations to go. No one should be surprised that there are Canadians here because basically everyone should know Canadians who have been here. It is such a common location for Canadians to come to. Living in Nicaragua, we're like, do all Canadians come here? Because it really feels that way. Everywhere you go, if you meet an expat, you meet a tourist, you are like, you always jump first to probably Canadian. If you go down to San Juan del Sur, which is the largest uh, tourist hub in the country, nearly 80% of the bars that you would go to as an expat, of course, the townie bars that are farther out, those are owned by Nicaraguans. But when you're in the, the town itself, all those places are Canadian. Finding a place that's owned by an American, an Australian, a New Zealander, well, that's pretty rare. It happens. No one's like surprised by that. But it's really the exception. All the main bars, the main restaurants, 
Canadian flags everywhere. Like it, it really is how it is. People take great pride. It's a, it's a kind of uh, uh, expat community that the Canadians have built. And you'll have places like the Moose Bar right in San Juan del Sur, right? Like very obviously trying to attract other Canadians who are wandering through and don't know that that's a Canadian hangout. Uh, Republica is another one. So, uh, so, so that has been a tradition. Now, whether you are personally affected or not, or you agree with the statements or not, what we're seeing is a very sudden in the last maybe six to 12 months. And remember, I've been in and out of Nicaragua for nine years. I've lived here full time as my completely dedicated home for more than three years. And in that time, we've always seen a lot of Canadians, but because I do a ton of relocation uh, information. I do not run a relocation service. I'm happy to do phone calls with people. If you want to do a little one-on-one -on -one and just have a conversation, um, I can point you in the directions of some things, but I do not run a relocation business. We do have the website relocatenicaragua.com just so it's easy to find us, but we don't sell any services for relocation. My business, if you will, is this YouTube channel. This is not my main job. It's just something I do for fun. But I think this is very valuable for people. But in this capacity, I talk to people in the comments. I talk to people on interviews, right? Like Playa Tesoro and My Latin Life. Like I'm, I'm talking to people about relocation all the time, had dinner with Canadians last night, had drinks with Canadians two days ago. Uh, it's just, it comes up a lot. I've had Canadian co-hosts on the show. Um, when you uh, do this and have the kind of interactions that I have, you do get a little bit of a cross-section of what's going on in the world as far as the opinions that you're getting from different places. And when I first started doing this, when I would talk to Canadians, it was all about those first three things. Wow, if I could save money, I mean, that would be fantastic. No one wants to avoid low cost of living. Some people aren't driven by it, and they often go to Costa Rica because if you have unlimited money, Costa Rica has some beautiful options for you, for sure. And you can pay to get beyond the safety issues. You can pay to get beyond the the transit issue. You can make it really comfortable if you have a lot of money. But if you're on any kind of a budget at all, even if you're a millionaire, right, but if you're not a hundred millionaire, just a single millionaire, then saving money by coming to a place like Nicaragua is extremely worthwhile for most people. It just makes sense. So that it's a low cost of living has always been an item that everyone from no matter where they're from in the world, they always talk about that. And that it's warm. Of course, some people that completely drives them away, not an option. It's too warm. We hear that all the time. But for the group that does come here, a lot of us are here saying either the warmth is specifically what they want, or like me, I'd prefer if it wasn't warm, but stability. I want the same weather every day, more or less. And that I get here as well. So it is, you can have a few different factors. I prefer if it was cooler, but the stable every day but I'm happy with stable, even if it's warm. Uh, and then the third one, that there aren't so many Americans. We've always heard those things. Those are consistent. But in the last six to 12 months, those stories have started to change. People are much less concerned with all of those. Suddenly, it's not Nicaragua is so cheap that I would consider it. No, it's that Canada is so expensive, I have to find something else. And that opens up a lot of the world as an option, even if you're assuming regional Basically, everybody from Mexico to uh, Nicaragua is very affordable. Costa Rica then is quite expensive, so you wouldn't maybe look at that as an escape option. Panama, though, again, becomes pretty cheap. And of course, you can make Costa Rica cheap, but of course, you can make Canada cheap under the right conditions as well. Uh, and then much of South America. So if you're just looking for not Canadian expensive, you have a lot of options. That wouldn't necessarily drive you to Nicaragua, but it certainly wouldn't rule it out. It would remain the best choice, but by a very small amount. So if you're being... Uh, pulled to Nicaragua specifically due to cost of living, then Nicaragua is going to just win because it's going to be the top of your list. But if you're being pushed out of Canada because uh, you're simply looking for an alternative, then you have a very large number of options that will satisfy that. So depending on the perspective, uh, it may drive people evenly to the region, which we're seeing. We're seeing everywhere in the region this is happening. Nicaragua just happens to be kind of the optimum tuning for the majority of Canadians who are looking to expat. So we're seeing a completely different picture than, say, uh, Uruguay, where, yeah, some Canadians want to go there. It's a great country, very safe, lots of wonderful things, but it's really far away. It's a lot more expensive. It doesn't have a lot of the things that Canadians are probably looking for. But so because cost of living is such a strong factor here in Nicaragua, that obviously puts it on just everybody's radar. If you say, 
it's getting so expensive in Canada or in the United States, we're seeing this too, then the natural thing is, well, where's the place that's going to give me the best bang for the buck? Why not start there if finances are what you're looking at? And Nicaragua should always be the first one that pops up on that list. Now it doesn't, again, it doesn't mean it's for everyone, but if you're making a list of all the affordable locations, that's a really long list, but Nicaragua would be at the top of it. So again, no surprise that the tradition of Canadians coming to Nicaragua and this new factor that very specifically makes Nicaragua the best choice for that one factor, really, it just seems obvious that Canadians are going to be at least talking about Nicaragua quite a bit. And of course, we've also heard uh, from somewhere with statistics, right, that there's actually the like record number, at least in the recent history, of Canadians moving to the United States that the U.S. is actually seems to be outpacing Canada in cost of living at the moment, uh, has a few more job options, uh, and a lot of Canadians are seeing uh, what traditionally was, uh, and this is what we're being told, uh, a, a lot of extra freedoms up in Canada. Those things are eroding and the U.S. is not looking so much as a negative in those aspects anymore. Not that it's looking better, it's just that Canada has, has kind of detuned itself from being the land of the free, and America, which is a place where they're just used to not having a lot of freedoms, but needing to talk about about it as if there is, the Canadians are often saying, well, it's about the same now. So if finances are the only thing that matter or jobs are the only thing that matter, might as well be in the United States. But if you are looking at the loss of liberties in Canada or the United States, this is certainly not unique to Canada. This is a major thing that's going on in much of the world and much of the Western world right now that there's a curtailment of personal freedoms. Uh, and we're hearing tons of it, right? We're hearing the same things from France with the, you know, real heavy crackdown. They've never never had freedom of speech, but the crackdowns on really critical uh, speech is happening now at rates that it didn't happen in the past. So they as well have people who are going abroad seeking more personal liberties. But for Canadians, where their world has dramatically changed, this is what we're told, I am not a Canadian, I'm going on what I've gotten from people I've spoken to. Over the last six to 12 months, the conversations have switched from all these just really good reasons that Nicaragua draws Canadians in to now people are because of financial reasons or because of fear of the collapse of their government or a loss of personal liberties are looking for a place that's going to solve those things. And more than anywhere else in the region, Nicaragua is extremely open and free. So when you feel that you're being constrained in Canada or the United States and you don't have the freedom to live the life that you want to live, coming to Nicaragua will often give you at least a large step towards it. Very few places, if you really want to be super liberal uh, with, with personal liberties, right, which is not libertarian in the American context, if you want to have like just the, the right to do whatever makes sense for you, basically there's no place that's going to go as far as people generally want to go, right? Because if you really want to go that far, you probably don't want to pay taxes. You don't want to have a government at all. Yeah, that you can't just go find that granted. But if you're looking for a place that tunes towards personal liberty, that has the least government interaction in your daily life, that lets you basically go about your lives doing whatever you need to do. And as long as you pay your taxes, don't go around hurting other people, don't steal things, right? As long as you're being a pretty much good person, they're going to just let you be, let you live on your own. You want to live off the grid? Go for it. You want to, you know, live in a remote area? Go for it. You want to build a tiny house that U.S. zoning won't allow? Go for it. You want to, you know, do whatever, pretty much you can do it. Do no harm, and chances are it, you're going to be left alone. Like, why would they care? Why would they get involved if you're not hurting anybody? If you want a country that doesn't require every single thing be labeled so that, you, you know, you know, just it's crazy what's going on in the North, and I totally get it, right? Those are not necessarily reasons that I left the United States, but I totally feel why those things would have driven me out, potentially. It, for me, it's a little bit more, I'm just really happy that I'm a place where I don't have to put up with that, but I don't know that I would have left because of it. But I totally understand why many people feel that this is a really important reason for them to move out on their own. Everyone's got their own reasons, everyone has their own uh, drives and factors that matter to them, but we are definitely sensing that there is a very strong general trend towards people having these feelings and beginning to do this research.
As an American who grew up on the border with Canada, just outside Toronto, we thought of Canada much like our second home. And throughout my life, we were always very envious of life in Canada. It was lower cost, but of course, salaries were lower. We understood that. But life was good, food was good, cost of living was low. It was a, a very free and friendly place. And my father long talked about how he wished he could retire to Prince Edward Island. Uh, my wife and I looked at buying a condo in Toronto when prices were better. We honeymooned in Canada. I was offered a uh, full scholarship to University of Toronto. Uh, like we really seriously uh, have done a lot of work in. I've had customers in Canada for decades and I helped open uh, Citigroup's banking operations in Mississauga. So I've been involved with Canada in a lot of ways over the entirety of my life. I grew up extremely close to the border and even when I went to university, which I ended up doing in the United States, not in Canada, in Michigan, I was super close to the border at Sarnia and Canada was something I had to drive through to get between my parents' house and my university. So, I mean, we're really tied to Canada strongly where I grew up. So we always had this view, and now what we're seeing, what we're hearing, all the time, literally every day, I talk to Canadians who tell me the same story, that some combination of they can't afford to live or they don't like the political environment, they don't see a good future for their lives, for their children, and they're looking for something else. And Nicaragua really does seem to fit that bill. Now, there's two sides to this. We understand that lots of Canadians are feeling frustrated or looking for something new or just don't have a really bright view of the future. And it can be that simple. It doesn't take a disaster in Canada to cause people to want to leave. It simply it requires that there be a change in the tuning of life. It costs a little bit more. Jobs are a little bit harder to find. They don't feel as confident in their government. They don't see a good future path whatever it takes, that little bit can make them say, but we have the freedom to live in so many places. Why would we be in Canada if it's not meeting our needs when someplace else might? And conversely, some places like Nicaragua are offering kind of the dream, low cost, high safety, and lots of personal liberty with a bright future and a great place to raise children. Now, of course, lots and lots of Canadians are going to try to tell you what they've heard from the United States government, that Nicaragua is dangerous, that it's unstable, that it's whatever. They have a million stories that come out of the U.S. You can go look at the U.S. State Department website. But of course, if you look at that for any country, the United States doesn't like magical it says that they're dangerous or whatever. The information there is widely known to be propaganda and not actually a uh, telling of information about those places. Most Canadians know not to trust the U.S. government sources for that kind of stuff, but a lot of Americans actually do fall for it. And it's a real problem, and it's one of the ways that the American government manipulates the public in an easy way, even though they have stated clearly as a government that they are allowed to use propaganda against the American people and what you get from the government is not in any way going to be required to be the truth. So they've given people straight up warning that they're going to use these things for manipulative purposes, but people still fall for it. It's, it's very tempting to say, well, this is an official resource, this is what they're telling me, and ignore reality. But because so many Canadians have come to Nicaragua, it's easy to find a friend who's been there and has wonderful stories. And of course, some people have had bad stories, but in general, you have all these people who are able to reference the country and, and give some insight. But when you go online, there are very few resources, and that's one of the reasons that we have this uh, YouTube channel, is because we want an opportunity to show real Nicaragua in real time so that people can't say the things that they traditionally have. Well, yeah, you got pictures. It was good back then. Everyone's always got a way to frame it, right? Oh, well, it's safe for you and it's good for you. The weather was good while you were there, whatever, right? But here we are showing right now, today, all over the country, uh, the beautiful weather, how safe it is that I can walk in the most dangerous neighborhoods in the country safely with a camera without any worries whatsoever. I don't need bodyguards. There aren't police on the street all over the place. There's no militarization. There is no violent crime going on other than the, the normal baseline uh, below the U.S. level. It is super welcoming. And we just did a video called Does Nicaragua Want Me? where we talk about the tuning of things like tourist visas, especially for the U.S. and Canada, and just how great of an effort that Nicaragua puts into creating a tourist visa program 
that allows you to just come to Nicaragua and how their tax regime allows you to live in and work from, but not in, work from Nicaragua uh, and at the with the tax advantages and the low cost of living, how easy it is for Americans and Canadians to work remotely or to take retirement savings and retire here. And you're going to be able to, and, and we got videos on this stuff, right? We'll do our best to link below, but we're always going to miss some. But we've got videos about how you can retire early because you're in Nicaragua. We have videos about how the tourist visa and the residencia work and all those things. We have videos about uh, the lower cost of living, the safety, every one of those factors. We've got a video on it. And of course, anytime, get down in those comments down below and ask questions. We love engaging, especially with new people. I mean, we love our own people too, but they've engaged before. We love that new people are coming and engaging. We try to do a weekly live stream for several hours on Thursday. We don't always make it, but we try really hard to do that. And that's a great time to hop in and ask questions in real time. But don't be afraid. Just ask questions, leave comments, things you're worried about, things you're concerned about. But check out the videos. We have a massive catalog. I try to update them every year, uh, all the things you need to know. And basically, and this, this sounds crazy, but there's nothing about Nicaragua that you need to worry about. If you're worried about it, it's probably a false concern. And I don't just mean safety. Like, obviously, you're going to get misinformation from the North because Canada, like the U.S. Now, the U.S. has a much stronger reason because of its military history against Nicaragua, its occupation of Nicaragua, because Nicaragua was a colony of the United States for a very long time. It was occupied for a huge percentage of its history. So the U.S. feels a very strong compulsion to make sure Nicaragua doesn't look good now that it's free from U.S. control because that makes the U.S. bad. Their claims that they had to be there to help when obviously it was anything but uh, go very, it's easy to feel like maybe that's true when you have no other evidence. But when you see how good Nicaragua is doing now, how well they're doing, how good it is for the people who live here, uh, now that the U.S. is not manipulating the system and keeping them down, then it makes the U.S. look like it was punishing Nicaragua, not helping, which is exactly what the case was. So they have a really strong need to make sure that Nicaragua does not look good, not just to Americans, but on the world stage. But Canadians now, because things are going so poorly in Canada, or or that's what we're told by Canadians who talk to me all the time over the last six to 12 months. Because of that, Canada now has, and you can see this in the political reactions to the statements that were made a week ago, that there are politicians who are panicking because they can't let people, you can see it in their tone, right? People saying, I know Nicaragua, they're making this up. No one would ever want to go to Nicaragua, but millions of Canadians come here all the time and know that's not true. That's quite a bit of putting his foot in his mouth. Like that's just flat out lying. It's so easy to disprove, but you can see the panic because Nicaragua is showing that lower taxes, lower cost of living, obviously the lack of snow, some of the greater civil liberties, these things can exist. They can exist really easily. They exist nearby. Nicaragua is, yes, a shining example. And no, the majority of Canadians are not going to come to Nicaragua. That's just not going to happen. But a large number are. And Canada, obviously being much larger than Nicaragua, can still be the largest supplier of expats to Nicaragua, while Nicaragua is not the largest place taking expats from Canada. But Nicaragua shines as an example that nearby, with massive antagonistic problems from the United States, it is still possible to live better and do better, to behave better as a country on the world stage. Foreign policy from Nicaragua is some of the best in the world, right? It's a country you don't have to be embarrassed to be in. You don't have to be ashamed when you travel abroad. And people say, where do you live? And you say, places like the US and Canada. And you say, wow, some of their foreign policies are outright just evil, right? Hateful towards the world, right? When you come to places like Nicaragua, they can't say that. They go, well, mostly I don't know what your country does, but what little bit I know about it is they stand up for people and they're a good international player. Sure, they don't have international militaries going and putting bases places. They're not sending troops all over, so they're less likely to engender negative comments. But when you look at their foreign policy, it's some of the best. It's actually a place you can be proud of, which is quite a thing for a North American to think about. Living in North America, all of us are in the same boat. We're absolutely ashamed of our governments on the world stage. And we always have to say, it's our government, not us. But at some point, what, what does that even mean? Obviously, those governments are empowered by the population around you. It is kind of us until you leave and stand up for yourself and say, well, I'm going to take my voice out of that pool. 
and that's exactly what a lot of people are doing. But that's a big bonus in that you have this level of safety. And a lot of Canadians, I don't think this is true, but a lot of Canadians have said to me that they feel that the safety in Canada is no longer as safe as Nicaragua. I honestly don't think that's true. But what their claim is, and I know people get really worked up and Canada has been so safe in the past that now that it's a little bit less safe, it's easy to feel like it's a lot less safe. And you used to be able to not lock your doors and now you gotta be behind a gate, right? Things have changed for sure, but their claim is that Canada isn't releasing the violent crime statistics or they are skewing them and that what they're seeing on the ground is a greater degree of danger than what is being reported in the media. That is absolutely possible. We totally expect that from the North American governments. I don't have any specific reason to believe that in Canada other than anecdotal evidence from people who are talking to me, but that belief, that feeling that Canada has become dramatically less safe is definitely pervasive because I've heard the exact same thing from many people. Now, of course, I understand you will hear the exact same thing from many people when you have a group of politicians who are pushing a message. Are they doing that? I don't know. I'm not involved in Canadian politics. I don't normally see Canadian politics. So all I know is what I'm hearing on the ground, but it is a consistent story that at the very least, the safety in Canada has eroded and violent crime is now a major problem in the eyes of Canadians. And we do know that during the pandemic, Canada's response was, we'll just say 1984 and leave it at that, but that uh, domestic violence rose so much in Canada that during the pandemic, Nicaragua was safer than Canada. So they are into a range where they're competing with each other at this point. I still find it hard to believe that Canada could get as dangerous as Nicaragua in such a short period of time, but maybe the statistics have been skewed for a couple years and then it would be easily possible. So I don't know, but Nicaragua is very safe and it is very affordable and it is a really attractive location for Canadians who are looking to just find out Right, because this is one of the biggest things when you're in North America, Canada, traditionally not nearly as much as the United States, but the reactions I saw online this week and what I'm hearing from Canadians says that this is seemingly changing pretty rapidly, but they are so generally introspective and xenophobic that as countries, that the information and media that comes into the countries is so overseen, uh, pressured, controlled, I don't know, but definitely when we see US media from here and they're reporting about things, we can go out and double check because we can look out the window and see if it's true. We now know that they're fabricating huge amounts of the media, uh, which is an amazing thing. Move here, it will open your eyes like you wouldn't believe. You don't have to ask anyone. You don't have to take anyone's word for it. Walk around on the streets and then go check what the media is saying in the US and Canada and you'll be like, oh my gosh, this is so obviously verifiably false and there's so clearly no American or Canadian reporters going around collecting this information what is going on it's it's it is mind-blowing for sure but uh the governments in in north america really fear their populations in large numbers going out and just exploring the world not necessarily nicaragua not even necessarily latin america but going anywhere going to uh, switzerland going to thailand going to south africa and just getting a broader view of the world and that feeds them with a lot of information about what can be done and Sure, you may come back and be like, well, Canada is still better than this place I visited, but they're doing these things so much better. Why aren't we? Why can't we do that? And then it puts pressure on, on the government. Why aren't you doing these things well when Canada has more resources or when the United States has so many more resources than these countries that are already doing those things well? You told us you couldn't do it, but they demonstrated that you can. What's the real story? Those types of things are things that they are terrified about, both because seeing the world broadly encourages people to consider emigrating abroad and becoming expats uh, from their home country and severing ties and severing that tax base. And it's not just the tax base. Right now, most of the developed world and quite a bit of the global south are beginning to panic about the, we just turned, we believe, according to the United Nations, the demographic, uh, we've entered the demographic winter, meaning the global population is now shrinking, not just a few developed countries, the entirety of the planet is now shrinking from a human population perspective, which to a lot of us is potentially a good thing, but it causes a lot of problems because many, most, nearly all of the world economies have been built around the concept that they would have a consistent and mostly consistently growing population within their countries. And now that places like the US and Canada are not able to do that, they're not sustaining their populations without immigration at least, um, and they're not being offset by other places, the idea that a whole bunch of people could emigrate out all of a sudden is very scary just because they need workers, they need people, they don't want to be empty places. And if you think about 
say, for example, Latin America, which is larger by population than the U.S. and Canada combined, if Latin America starts to go through a steady state or contraction, they're going to start trying to encourage more and more immigration into their countries. And the U.S. and Canada, if they're not doing well, are going to naturally, as they are, push people out by just having terrible policies and high cost of living and big taxes. And when you face those things, you say, but all these other countries want me. Like, my own country seems to hate me. They treat me terribly. And I have to wait six months to get health care. I could go to Nicaragua and get it tomorrow. And just all these things. You think about the region. You start to say these questions in your mind. You say, why would I stay where I'm clearly not wanted when I could live better in a place where I'm actually wanted? And they fear that people will just flood out of the country, which is not what's happening right now, right? The headlines are Canadians are fleeing to Nicaragua. That's a couple of, of Canadians have fled to Nicaragua. That is true. In mass, no, that is not true. But in mass, Canadians are starting to question if they should be fleeing their country before the options dry up. Do they want to get into countries before those countries want to stop taking them? Do they want to get out before their own government stops letting them? It probably won't happen. That seems like a long shot. But people are fearing that. It doesn't matter if it's real. It only matters that people fear that it could happen. And I know Americans fear this a lot. Americans truly fear that their borders will be closed and they won't be allowed to leave. And it's not one group fearing the other. It's not Democrats thinking that Trump's going to get power and close the border. And it's not Republicans thinking that Biden's going to stay in power and close the border. It is both sides legitimately believing the other side may close the border. It is a everyone's bad in this situation in the United States. And it's a relatively real thing. We don't think that's going to happen, but there has been talk of complete border closures. And that's a really scary thing to be trapped completely inside your country, which is how many people around the world feel. But North Americans traditionally have not had to feel that way. And now they're starting to worry that they will. And that is weighing heavily on people's minds. And so given great options to go to, finding out that there are amazing options that are far better than the Canadian government is letting you in uh, to know tends to make people go uh, say a bunch of things. Why am I staying? What else are they hiding? Why don't I get out while the getting's good? Because right now is one of the best times to get out when you can't afford to stay. And Nicaragua, for example, is at a very low cost moment. There is so much opportunity to make that shift that, yeah, people are not fleeing to Nicaragua, but they are on the verge or they are at risk of discovering Nicaragua and fleeing down. So we're going to do a part two to this video, but I wanted to give some foundation and I wanted to get in, obviously, while the news is really fresh and give people because uh, this is the largest channel. Um, first of all, it's the largest channel in Nicaragua, but it's also the largest channel about relocation to the region. And uh, and I was just on the My Latin Life podcast uh, and, and a couple other, like I've been in a number of different media, uh, at least four or five different shows this week. And it's, uh, it's a really good opportunity to get out and and make sure that Canadians know that there are resources for them. And I'm not saying resources you pay for. I'm saying come to here and places like this. There are people who actually care and are just providing information, watch some videos and, and ask questions and consider that maybe there is a really good option for you. Maybe it's not Nicaragua. Maybe it's Guatemala. Maybe it's Paraguay. Maybe it's Argentina. There's a lot of places that are really nice places to live that are very nearby. They're very low cost that are really safe like nicaragua reasonably safe like like argentina like like you have a lot of blend of different things that may or may not be perfect for you different weather different food all kinds of things but i do suggest that you put nicaragua on your short list if you're a canadian and you're looking for a place where yeah there's some other canadians but you have some really great local stuff as well very safe very inexpensive, very welcoming, and going to give you not just the liberties that you remember, but more than you ever thought that Canada would ever consider giving you. Nicaragua's waiting for you. It's just sitting here letting you know that uh, being discovered is something it's always been trying, it's been trying to talk you into it, and it's just hard to convince people to give it a fair shake. So yeah, just come down. You don't need a visa. You don't need anything special. Hop a plane. Uh, I recommend you can get direct flights now through to Liberia, Costa Rica and take a bus across the border where I'm going to do a little how Canadians can get here video uh, for most Canadians who have the right to go through the United States. The best thing to do is find a way to get to Miami on a Canadian flight or to get to someplace like Houston and then transfer it to Spirit. Spirit will fly through Miami, but you actually get cheaper deals, not faster, but cheaper if you go someplace like Houston and take Spirit from 
in Houston through Miami, Fort Lauderdale, to Managua Airport. Um, it, it, there's just lower taxes in the US. An extra hop actually saves you money, even though it adds a little bit of time. You can get here with a little bit of, don't just use the, the cheap flight sites. They're gonna give you really expensive flights. A little bit of figuring things out. You can get to cheap airports in the US, get to uh, Managua and Nicaragua is so welcoming, so easy for you to come. And if you were to come, and say, uh, I packed a whole bunch of extra clothes and honestly, I don't wanna go back. That's one of the most amazing things about Nicaragua is you simply don't have to. If you came as a Canadian or an American and you just fell in love and you had enough clothes with you, you got your laptop so you could work, you don't have to leave. You'll have to do some paperwork eventually. After six months, after three months, you'll have to let Nicaragua know you want to stay longer. After six months, you'll have to do a border run or do residency, but neither one is a big deal. Both are open to you. And uh, just figure it out once you get here. It's super easy and Nicaragua will work with you. They want, really, really, truly want North Americans to come down and discover them and consider becoming voluntarily a part of this beautiful, beautiful community uh, that we have here. And of course, there are areas that are super enclavey and it'll feel like you're in with a bunch of Canadians and Americans, and there's a whole bunch of country that is much lower cost, much safer, uh, that is sprawling and beautiful, and you can become integrated in Nicaraguan society and live more like I do in the barrio, which both are available to you here in Nicaragua. Often people looking only see one or the other and don't realize that there are such completely divergent paths of, of coming to Nicaragua. Also, just a quick warning. If you are just newly looking into Nicaragua, be very wary of any online resource that is trying to sell you a law firm, trying to sell you a real estate agent. All those things, make sure you watch my videos or go on my live stream and ask questions about that. Those are extremely dangerous. Do not be misled. There are so many people looking to scam people who are just doing their initial research. Absolutely do not pay anyone, do not hire anything with a contract. Stay away from those agencies. Until you are living here, you must be living here before you ever have a serious conversation about a lawyer, a real estate agent, anything like that. No one should pressure you to talk to one of those or look at anything online. Do not look at any real estate online. Everything you're gonna see is fake. Everything is there to trick you because they know you don't know. They know you don't have enough resources to figure out what's real and what's not. They will play on that prey on that very, very heavily. So, so please be very careful. But all you have to do, it is a super safe country. Come and visit first. Find out what Nicaragua is actually like first. Build that information. There's no reason to try to do things from abroad. Nicaragua is absolutely safe and welcoming. Just come down for almost no money and find out for real. It will open your eyes. Everything you are seeing from Canada and from Nicaragua, from people who claim to be helping you from Nicaragua is fake. There is so much beauty and simplicity here that you can just come and discover and uh, and then you can go back and tell your friends all the things that you've learned. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. As always, if you would post on social media, tell a friend, family, send it around to the government. I would happily do government interviews if there's people uh, that want to talk to me. Uh, there in Canada. Um, I've done a lot of interviews here in the last week. This is definitely a hot topic and very important. And uh, I think we need to get voices out there uh, talking about what Nicaragua is really like, because there's so few people uh, willing or able to go out and give that kind of information. So thank you so much. I'll see you all tomorrow. And if you would be so kind, click on one of these videos. That'd be great.